Now we come to number eight in our series on life everlasting, death, dying, and the future hope. This one's the New Testament hope. And I'm so glad that we've got to this particular section of our study because we really do need to be concentrating on the Christian hope, the New Testament hope, the hope of everlasting life, the coming of Jesus and all that that means. We're given material in 1 Corinthians 15, John 14, of course, John 41 to 3, Jesus saying, I will come again. John 6, 1 Thessalonians 4, that famous chapter of how it will be, how we will ascend and meet the Lord in the air, and we will always be with the Lord. We have 1 Corinthians 15, when we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, and we will be completely changed. This mortal will put on immortality. This perishable will put on the imperishable. We will have eternal life with our loving Lord. And we're given First John 5 as well. So we need to think about it. And there's some quotes for this time, which we really do need to consider. The great unfinished aspect of Christ's return dominates the hope of the New Testament, says Michael Green. And that is so very true. It dominates it in a way that I think it was 216 times somebody counted that the blessed hope, the second coming, is mentioned just in the New Testament. I had the privilege of studying up at St Andrews in Scotland when I did my doctoral degree and the title of my thesis was Believing Christ's Return and it was all about the dynamics of Christian hope, what it really means to be a believer and I did a study on the biblical aspects and the historical aspects but ultimately I wanted to talk about what it means as a Christian to believe in this Christian hope of seeing Jesus return and being back together with our loving Lord. You know when Jesus in John 14 gave that reassurance to his disciples he was wanting to give them the very best hope because he was going to leave them and he knew that they will be absolutely devastated his death and even after his ascension he's still saying I will come again I will return the angels who meet the disciples there after Jesus ascension saying he will come back in the same way that you saw him go it's not going to be some secret rapture it's not going to be something invisible every eye shall see him we will know everybody on planet earth will know when Jesus returns on the clouds of heaven with all those myriads of angels this is what we're looking forward to and this is what we need to hold on to some quotes here from uh, some very famous theologians God in his very being is the future of the world, said Wolfhart Pannenberg. And you might even think that that wasn't uh, so important, but it is. And as we look at some of these others, Reinhold Niebuhr, nothing worth doing is completed in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Nothing true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we must be saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we are saved by love. Those aspects of love, faith, and most of all, hope, gives us the assurance that, yes, this life isn't the only life. All that we see around us, however beautiful it may be, is going to end and we are going to be with the Lord in the earth made new. Jürgen Moltmann says, just as the resurrection faith is hope's foundation, so Christ's second coming defines hope's horizon. Without the expectation of Christ's second coming, there is no Christian hope. I really want to emphasize that. I want to underline that. We call ourselves Adventists because we believe in the Advent. That's the most important aspect of what we believe. Jesus is coming again. Maranatha, that's how those early Christians greeted one another. 
and we should be doing the same ourselves. May God bless you as you study this week.